Hi, Paul Nolan here and welcome to another production tip from Mixmag TV. This time we'll be looking at Julio Bashmore's track, Battle for Middle U. Now if you've heard this track over the last year or so, you'll know that it possesses an absolutely monstrous bass riff, which we'll be learning how to recreate in Ableton Live today. So, let's have a little refresher of how it sounds and jump straight into Ableton Live and recreate it. Okay, now we're in Ableton Live, let's see how we can recreate this bass sound. I've got a MIDI channel here which I've renamed the bass and placed in one of the instruments in Ableton Live which is called Analog, which you'll find on Ableton Live Suite 8. Now, concentrating on the analog for a second, how this bass line is made is very, very simple actually. It's a monstrous bass line, but it's almost monstrously simple. Now. On the oscillator section here in analog, because again, it's built to be like an analog synthesizer, much as in the same way as Leonard Digital Silent, ES2 in Logic, and a number of other synths. We can push this F1, F2 control here all the way up to F1, which means that this sound is going to be output through filter one here. So I'm going to switch that on as well. I'm going to go back here to the oscillator section, go to shape and select the sine wave. Now this sound is predominantly a sine wave, which is controlled and shaped using the ADSR envelope, which we'll get to in a second. But first of all, it's really, really important to get the tunings right so we don't get the wrong kind of sound or we don't get uh, too much or too little bass. So I've got the notes here in a MIDI clip up the top. If I double click here, you'll see the notes that have been played. Now, if I click this fold button here, you'll see the notes much more clearly. So you can see it's a very simple four note melody with A2 at the beginning, then it rises up to E3, then down to G2, and then to D3. So it's a nice little pattern that really works well. So back to the analog, if I play that now, As you can hear, it's got a much higher tone than really it should do. It almost sounds like an announcement at a train station. So in this case, we need to drop the octaves down here, which I'm going to drop by two. So we're going to go from National Rail Announcement to this. Okay, now we're starting to get there. So in terms of being able to push this sound forward, I'm going to drop the frequency of the filter down to around about 350 or so hertz. And also move into the amplifier section here. And then I'm going to change some settings around here as well. So I'm going to push the sustain up to about 0.4, as you can see here. Now, what that's going to do is make the sound a lot more present and a lot more long in terms of how the sound is played on the keyboard. So let's have a little listen. Okay, so you can hear that sustaining a lot more. Now, one of the things that you need to look at here is the release time. If the release time is too long, what you'll actually get is a clash where the end of one note rolls into the beginning of another note, thus creating a very out of tune, sour type of uh, off key sound. So I normally set this to around about 494 milliseconds, and that really helps. Also as well, I'll just shorten the decay somewhat in order to maintain a clickier sound. And then let's have a little listen to it again. So as you can hear, small differences, but big ones in terms of how the sound is actually behaving. 
now I want to really take this to the next level. So how can I do this? Well, we can add some more uh, processing and we can drop a compressor in here. Now what I'm going to do here is push the compression attack and release up, which means it's going to be slower, which also means that it will iron out any of the volume kinks around the sound, but also what it will do is let through, in this case, if I just push that to 5 milliseconds or 4.99, that means the first 5 milliseconds will go through uncompressed, which means the clickiness that is very prominent in the original track will actually come through because I'm compressing the actual body of the bass sound rather than the clicky percussive striking sound which happens right at the beginning. So if I play that now, and I'm going to drag the threshold down here towards where this level meter is showing where the bass line is hitting. Now I'm going to add a little output. You may notice as well some of the higher notes, the bass comes out of it uh, at certain points. And the reason for that is because higher notes on the keyboard basically play higher frequencies, which means less bass, more top end. So in order to kind of even that out a little bit, what I'm actually going to do is add in an EQ8 just before the compressor and then click on the number one node here and then push up by about 3-4 dB at around about 120 Hz. Now what that's going to do is give it a bump in that real resonance sub end here. So let's have a little listen. So that's how you make the sound. Okay, now that you've learned how to recreate that bass sound from Julio Bashmore's Battle for Middle U, you can use this technique in your own productions in order to come up with your own new and unique sounds. Another tutorial will be up soon. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.